Hey, it's Petra, and I'm meditating under the roadway. It is almost the summer solstice, so it's the light, really late in the day. In the evening, golden light is coming through the trees, and I just love this moment. long sunsets and twilights in between Gemini and Cancer season. And we're right at the end of Gemini season. And I've really been meditating on the power of three. This whole Gemini season, I've just been thinking about it. Why is three the magic number? Third time's the charm. You know, why a lot of, a lot of times people, you know, it's just common to use that number, the number three when doing spells or manifestations or you know you say things three times you do things three times and I've all Gemini season I've been thinking about it and it has a really practical aspect to it like third time's the charm what does that mean it means you try three times and on the third try is when you get it right three strikes and you're out it's like if you can't get it by the third try you know you're not gonna get it like you're out of here right? you get three three chances and I've been thinking about like practically why that is right and it's it's to me it's like if you're trying to hit a target with a ball, right? Or, you know, let's say you're aiming for something, you're throwing something and aiming at a target. The first time you throw it, the first time you aim, right? You'll either hit too short or too far. And that'll give you information, right? That'll give you information about, do I need to throw it harder? Do I need to um, throw it softer? Did I go too far to the right? Did I go too far to the left? Now, the second time you throw it, the second time you shoot for your aim, you'll take that information into account, right? If you undershot, you might throw it a little harder, throw it a little farther. If you threw it too far, you might throw it a little softer. You make that adjustment on the second time. And the second time, it'll also give you information, right? Let's say you threw it too far to the right the first time, and you throw it too far to the left the second time. And it gives you a second set of information, a second point, uh, a second data point. And so that third time, you now have two pieces of information, two data points to base your aim on, right? This third, the third times of the charm. I've definitely experienced that in a lot of ways, um, just in a really real world context, not even in terms of magic or anything, just life, you know? You, you do something and then you, you learn you got to go farther in the other direction and then you got to come back a little bit. Um, and so it's got me thinking about these three ref reference points. Oh, the Blue Jays are here. It, uh-uh. Okay, what was I saying? I had to chase off the 
The Blue Jays are eating all my seedlings. <laughs> um, and they always come by at this time of day. They, the, the Blue Jays come through at like dawn and at dusk. Sometimes they come through in the middle of the day, but they always come by at this time of day. Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, but three points of reference. So when you do something for the third time, you have two data points, two vantage points to base that third direction on. And that allows us, you know, that allows you to, to be very precise. It's like the middle, it's the middle ground, right? You go, you went too far this way and then you went too far that way. And now you know exactly what both of those sides look like. So you can calculate what it would take to get that, that middle and to hit it on the nose, to hit the target. So just thinking about that number three, the power of three in a very practical context um, has helped me think about why we use it in magic. Right? And this kind of creating three vantage points, three data points, three... It creates a triangle. It creates a the first shape. You know, you have one line. It's just a line. There's nothing in it. You can't contain any space. You create two lines, and it's just an angle. There's no space. It's not a. There's no. It's not a container of space. It's not a shape. It has no shape. It's just an angle. It's the third line that creates space. It creates a container. Um, you know, that is the third dimension. <laughs> right? Um, left, right, forward, back, up and down. Um, you know, so when you do, when you say something three times or do something three times, um, it creates this effect of creating a resonant space in between those three points. And that's how something becomes real. Um, you know, that's how a pattern is established. It's like you can't tell if it's a pattern when you just have one beat. If you just have two beats, you still can't tell if it's a, what the pattern is. But once you get the third beat, then you see the rhythm. That's that third, you know, data point. And, you know, Gemini, it rules, or it's, it's the third house. And the third house is associated with our surroundings, our reality, our environment, the things that are around us. And Gemini is associated with the hands and the lungs and the breath. And I think about those two organs, or the hands aren't an organ, but those two parts of the body, that's how we relate to the world around us, right? Really directly. Um, that's how we touch things and um, are able to interact with the real world. You know, like,
the self, the air Aries is the head, the self. Taurus is the throat. You know, the the um translating the reflection, the connection between the self and the, the body, right? The lower the lower body and the upper body. Um or the this this reflection point where our head is attached to our body. <laughs> and then it's Gemini. It's the Gemini hands and lungs that allow us to kind of walk around in that, right? Um, and do things and make things real. And I, it's such a beautiful reflection, too, of how the garden is moving. Um, you know, everything, everything was just beginning in Aries season, all the seedlings were just pushing out, and then Taurus season, they all start to take shape, uh, they, they start to, sh you know, shoot up their stalks and strengthen themselves, and kind of, you start to see, uh, you know, what happened, how much water was there over the winter, what was happening underground, you start to see that being reflected above ground. Right, the, the trees that got a lot of water, they're gonna, during the winter, during the dormant months, in Taurus season, that's when you're actually gonna see those leaves coming out um, and see the effect or the reflection of what's happening internally, externally. And then Gemini season, it's when all the flowers really start coming out. I mean, there are flowers that'll be present all year round or um, in Aquarius season, some of the, the flowers started, but really like all the flowers are coming out at this point um, in Gemini season. It's like overwhelming flower, flower just bursting out everywhere. It's very um, active and lots of pollinators and bees and birds and um things are actually happening <laughs> things are happening you're starting to see the full form of the plants they had to go through their breaking out phase then they had to go through their fortifying um pulling up from the underworld into the upper world and then now in gemini season they're getting to actually express their pattern, their design, you know, the, the fullness of the expression is being seen. And it took this amount of time. It took three moons after the equinox. It took three, three cycles after the equinox for that to happen. Um, you know, and we're just on this cusp, we're like at the very tail end of Gemini season, and then we're going to go into uh, cancer season and it's it, it's just I don't know it's kind of it's also clearing clearing up for me or resonating with the um, the empress card in the tarot right it's the number three and people often associate that with Taurus or Venus for obvious reasons um, but I definitely see why number three is the empress, the go the, the goddess of creation, that feminine creator feels very present right now in the garden and just showing me why we why we say things three times if you want it to come true why you do something three times you know turn in a circle three times um whatever it is why that's such a common number in magic making and manifestation because it is creation it's literally expressing something a pattern fully into reality into the third dimension
it is creating something in the third dimension. So, cheers to Gemini season and onward to Cancer season.